You know, just a year ago, I never would have believed that this would become one of the most sought after items in the nation. When the coronavirus pandemic hit, panic buying sent everyone rushing to the store to grab whatever was left on the shelf, only for us to realize that, well, maybe I didn't need 15 bottles of hand sanitizer or 400 rolls of toilet paper. But the problem was more serious than bath tissue and disinfectants. The New York Times ran the following headline. But wait, weren't all the grocery stores running low on these very products? Something serious was happening in the world. Business Insider wrote about Bill Byan, a potato farmer from Sheridan, Montana, who threw away over 700 tons of potatoes on his farm alone. Bill had so many potatoes, he needed a bulldozer to get them all into the hole where he buried his crops for the year. But as the New York Times and many other news outlets reported, we saw the same thing happening with milk, eggs, and livestock. The United States government even hired federal veterinarians to help the process of depopulating millions of pigs, chicken, and cows. So I gave Mr. Byan a call to figure out what was happening. He explained that as soon as the schools and restaurants shut down, the processing plants that farmers like Mr. Byan relied on had to cut down on their own production, which in turn meant they needed less from the farmers. See, the problem was not that no one wanted milk or eggs or beef. In fact, these items were becoming harder and harder to find at supermarkets and stores. It's the supply chain from the growers to the supermarket that was disrupted. What happens in the standard supply chain in America is that one category is reliant on the next to buy their products. A potato farmer like Bill sells to a distribution company who then ships the products over to a manufacturing plant where the potatoes are made into french fries or mashed potatoes. And these processed foods are then sold to another distributor who then ships the products over to end buyers like schools, restaurants, and supermarkets like Walmart. But the problem we faced back in spring was caused by a single piece of this system being removed from the equation. The consumers of the product, schools, restaurants, and businesses, were not buying. Since the product was not being consumed, distributors had no one to ship their products to. Manufacturers had no one to distribute for them. And in the case of food, farmers had no one to process their crops. So while all this was happening, Americans were losing their jobs and couldn't afford to feed their families. Businesses shut down, and upwards of 57 million Americans were left without a salary. So many turned to food banks. But soon enough, the food banks themselves ran out of food. How could it be that farmers were throwing away tons of crops and slaughtering millions of animals while food banks were unable to feed hungry Americans? It was evident that we were dealing with a supply chain issue where farmers sold only to their distributors and not to end buyers like restaurants and schools. So I asked Mr. Byan, what is stopping you from selling your potatoes directly to the food banks? His response, where would I find enough food banks to sell all my potatoes to? And he raised a valid point. A local food bank in Sheridan, Montana, couldn't possibly handle all 700 tons of his potatoes. Now, while Mr. Byan did donate well over one ton of potatoes to soup kitchens and food banks, he just could not find enough people to sell all his potatoes to. So he threw them away. That right there is the essence of the problem. But remember, it's not just about animals and crops. On the personal protective equipment front, we needed a way to defend ourselves from the virus. At the start of the pandemic, many brewing companies that typically make alcoholic beverages shifted their production to making hand sanitizer because of the alcohol content and disinfectants. Heretic Brewing Company made that change in spring 2020. But many small businesses like this one were faced with a similar problem. Let's say a brewing company in a small town in Nebraska produces hundreds of bottles of hand sanitizer and decides to either donate or sell these bottles. The brewing company produces more than what their local town needs. Now, while this small town in Nebraska may have experienced the luxury of having too much hand sanitizer to go around, larger cities across the nation were faced with harsh shortages 
because their usual suppliers ran out of the product. Let's take the example of a hospital in San Francisco that needs sanitizer. They look to their distributor, who has no supplier to fulfill that hospital's request. In Nebraska, there was no buyer. In San Francisco, there was no supplier. The issue was getting the hand sanitizer from, from the brewing company in Nebraska to the hospital in San Francisco. America needed a way for a supplier with an excess of valuable items to be able to post their products on a public platform so that buyers can get in direct contact with them. So I had an idea for a website that would target this very problem. I called it Supply Chain Relief. It was a win-win for both the buyer and the supplier. Now, when you type in supplychainrelief.org into your web browser, you'll be taken to this forum. Here, buyers can either browse and scroll the site, or they can hit supplies at the top of the menu bar, where they can actually search for a particular item. Once they find the item they're looking for, they will hit the box that says contact information. And just like that, they will have the email address and or phone number of the company that supplies that product. It really is just that simple. I thought of this idea back in April 2020, but by November, we had grown weary of pandemic restrictions. In California, businesses reopened, restaurants started offering outdoor dining, movie theaters were back in operation, and in other parts of the country, restrictions were even more lax. But hospitalizations continued to rise. We saw more than 200,000 new cases per day. And even worse, we reported a shocking 3,000 deaths per day. But this was not the only scary part. What made all of this worse was that we still did not have a way to get masks on the faces of doctors, nurses, or even the general public. Doctors and hospitals who risk their lives for us every day are being given a limited number of masks. A nurse reported in November that she still uses the same five N95 masks that she was given back in March. But this was not a problem in South Korea. It was not a problem in New Zealand. It was a problem in the United States, the superpower country of the world. As I was programming supply chain relief with COVID in mind, I thought that perhaps a similar solution could be used for the wildfires that were raging all over California. Now, while the state never entirely ran out of firefighting equipment, continued natural disasters like wildfires and earthquakes could potentially disrupt the supply chain. And then I thought, what will America's system look like in a world of future pandemics? Or biochemical warfare? Hospitals will be overcrowded with patients, and once again, personal protective equipment will be at a shortage. Similarly, some parts of the country and even the world will be better off when it comes to how much product they will have stocked. The pandemic has highlighted this issue, but the ramifications of it are not unique to COVID. We are not dealing with a COVID problem. We are dealing with a supply chain problem. Adding some kind of a bridge between buyer and supplier, such as supply chain relief, solves the problem that we faced bypasses the bottleneck we faced back in spring 2020. A potato farmer like Bill not only can avoid throwing away 700 tons of potatoes, but can actually sell them to buyers across the world. So while COVID still endangers the lives of many, fear not. Now the hospitals and stores can get the food, the personal protective equipment, and yes, the toilet paper that they need we will no longer have to worry about whether there will be enough to go around. Thank you.